Let's explore the most topographically and physically challenging part of the sound, an area called the race. As we fly in from the south, we can see that the race is bounded on the west by Long Island and the east by Fishers Island. Our flight path will be the blue line and will take us from the south to the northern edge of the map, then returning south. Oceanographically, this area connects the sound to the Atlantic Ocean and serves as a major migratory corridor for marine species including striped bass, bluefish, blackfish, fluke, and lobster. The race has been designated as a significant coastal fish and wildlife habitat by the New York Department of State since it represents a very unusual physical environment in New York State with deep turbulent waters and shoals constituting a productive and diverse habitat for marine fishes. The incessant strong tides that race through this area and give it its name can reach speeds greater than 2 meters per second. As we fly to the north, the multi-beam map shows large sand waves created by these currents. Here the sonar map indicates the location of a wreck that was identified by scuba divers as the Swedish steamer the Voland that sank in 1908 after colliding with the passenger liner Commonwealth in dense fog. All aboard the Volan were rescued by one of the Commonwealth's lifeboats. Shortly thereafter, the ship quickly sank in close to 100 feet of water. The 234-foot-long Volan was a bulk ore carrier en route to Nova Scotia. The video provides a snapshot of a portion of the large wreck, showing several invertebrates that have colonized much of the surface of the wreck. A wreck provides a solid substrate for organisms to attach to, and if we know the date of the sinking, as with the Volan, provides a timestamp to gauge the development of the communities that live on them. The extent of the scour mark on the seafloor is a good indication of the strength and direction of the currents flowing by the wreck. As we continue north along our flight path, the water shallows with Valiant Rock being only 18 feet deep. This shallow area is part of a major moraine deposited by a glacier over 19,000 years ago. Topographically, this area is the most dynamic part of the sound. Our flight plunges us into the deepest basin in the sound, over 330 feet deep. The crossing parallel lines on the seafloor are artifacts of the sonar data collection and processing and are not natural features. As the water shallows, the seafloor is dominated by bedrock, which has been exposed by strong currents. This has recently been confirmed by the National Undersea Research Center at the University of Connecticut through ground truthing of parts of this multi-beam map using an underwater towed imaging system called ISIS. This system was equipped with two video cameras and a still camera. The video illustrates that the bottom of this part of the sound is strewn with boulders of various sizes. This hard substrate supports many invertebrates including the yellow sponge cleona, the hydrozoan tubularia, and anemones. The boulders also provide habitat for fish and shellfish including cunners, blackfish, crabs, and lobsters. Since the Isis is not self-propelled, it either drifts with the current or the ship can tow it against the current to achieve the slow speed necessary to capture clear video. This means that the Isis can cover long but narrow swaths of the seafloor, since it doesn't require anchoring or dynamic positioning of the ship, 
both of which restrict the area that can be surveyed. The downside to ISIS is that it is difficult to stop to achieve the more detailed inspection necessary for species identification or quantification. ISIS is therefore a first-order observation tool. As we fly south, we continue to encounter very rough bottom topography that was scoured to its present depth by tidal currents. This area around Race Rock Lighthouse experiences some of the most dynamic water flows in the sound. This is often visible as standing waves develop on the surface during periods of maximum tidal flow. This is especially true when the wind blows against the tide. The nature of the seafloor in this area is not well known so more visual examination is necessary to characterize its habitats. As we complete our flight to the south, we encounter a feature that is likely another moraine, having all of the characteristics of these bouldery glacial remnants. As we fly over the top, we arrive at another site that has been partially examined by NERC in 1987 with the Human Occupied Submersible Delta and recently with the ISIS in 2009. Both attempts to fully characterize this area with imagery were impeded by the strong currents that flow around this feature. In the video, you can see that even though the water depth is over 200 feet deep, the current here is still strong enough to structure the seafloor into quite large sand waves that are home to flounders, lobsters, and crabs. As we end our exploration of the race, the multi-view map clearly shows the striking diverse topography of this area of the sound. The physical challenge of working undersea in this area ensures that it remains one of the least explored ecosystems in the sound.